Greetings fellow Power Rangers fans and curious anatomy enthusiasts. Are you ready to explore the golden brawn and intimidating physique of one of the most iconic villains in the franchise? Yes, that is right. Today we're going to take a closer look at the anatomy of Goldar, the henchman of the nefarious Rita Repulsa. As one of the most memorable villains in Power Rangers history, Goldar has been a fan favorite for decades. With his towering height, fearsome armor, and striking golden hue, Goldar cuts an imposing figure on screen. But what makes this villain so physically impressive? What kind of muscles, bones, and armor make up his formidable physique? In this video, we are going to dive deep into Goldar's anatomy and explore everything from his massive biceps to his body's capability for magic. We will examine the secret behind his impressive movements and analyze how his body allows him to perform incredible feats of strength and agility. And we will even take a closer look at the golden armor that adorns his body, exploring the materials and construction techniques that make it such a challenging barrier against the Power Rangers attacks. So, if you're ready to learn more about the anatomy of Goldar, grab your popcorn and settle in for a deep dive into the world of Power Rangers villainy. Whether you're a lifelong fan or just a curious observer, you'd be sure you'd come away with a newfound appreciation for the physicality and craftsmanship that goes into the creation of one of the most iconic villains in pop culture history. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Who is Goldar? Where did he come from? Goldar, that mighty and gloriously fettered fiend, the quintessential embodiment of bad guy with flair, just the thought of him brings to mind his majestic wingspan, which I am convinced he flapped with the grace of a fallen angel trying to earn redemption points. But who was Goldar and from whence did he descend to grace us with his flamboyant villainy? Let us go back, way back, to the time of Goldar and his elder brother Silverback, the dashing duo who dedicated their lives to serving the mighty Lord Zed. They racked up victories like kids collecting trading cards, earning themselves more shiny accessories than a pop star's wardrobe. You see, every conquest came with a shiny new piece of armor, like frequent flyer miles for conquering planets. Oh, but there was a plot twist brewing. The ever-perceptive Goldar sensed a chink in Zed's evil armor. Perhaps due to his unfortunate encounter with a Zeo crystal, something about turning him into a cosmic headache. While Silverback stomped around questioning Zed's choices like a particularly cantankerous giant, Goldar held onto that respect button and refused to press it. Silverback's defiance went south real quick, and Zed decided to display some tough love by vaporizing him. Goldar, who has always been the loyal sibling, was given the honor of carrying out the execution. Can you imagine the family dinner conversation after that? So, Goldar, how's work? All right, you beheaded your brother, past the salt. After that unfortunate family affair, Goldar donned his evil space armor and was sealed in a cosmic dumpster by Zordon. Fast forward thousands of years to the present day, or at least the present day within the Power Rangers universe because time travel is kind of their jam, Goldar was back in action and leading the charge against Angel Grove, the city that seemingly had no urban planner. Goldar's battles were a symphony of kicks, punches, and enough flames to make a pyromaniac blush. It was like a medieval knight crossed with a flamenco dancer, all flair, fetters, and a power to make even the most solid of Zords cower before his double kick onslaught. And let us not forget the time he tried to impress Rita with a genie, because when conquering galaxies gets mundane, summoning a wish-granting being is the natural next step. But amidst all the flashy combat and cosmic drama, Goldar left us with mysteries. What happened to him in the end? Did he dissolve into villainous particles? Did he go on a sabbatical to learn the art of minimalism? Did he finally launch his Broadway career in a dazzling musical called Evil and Fettery? And let us not overlook his origins. Titan, Saturn's most prominent moon. Titan was the ultimate remote vacation spot until NASA spoiled tranquility with a rover in 2004. Goldar's presence alone would have shaken up the moon's placid lakes of liquid methane, leaving the Titans to scratch their heads and wonder if their moon was mooning them. So who was Goldar? A sibling with a sword, a flamenco aficionado with a fiery temper, a loyal henchman to a Zed with a questionable fashion sense, and a native of Titan who left interplanetary fetters wherever he went. Whether you'd want to remember him for his battles, his bravado, or his brooding backstory, Goldar will forever remain one of the zaniest, zestiest, and zord-defeatingest villains in Power Rangers history. Ah! 
Is he made of pure gold? Ah, Goldar, the golden guy who decided to take the worth his weight in gold idiom a bit too literally. In the grand saga of Power Rangers, we have seen our fair share of quirky character designs, but the new movie's rendition of Goldar has left fans more divided than a math class debate on fractions. So now let us picture this. You've got your popcorn, your soda, and a sense of nostalgic anticipation as you settle into this theater for the latest Power Rangers movie. The Zords roll onto the screen looking like they've been a Transformers-themed holiday, and the Rangers strut around in armor that seems borrowed from Tony Stark's closet. Sure, they may have gotten the Iron Man swag, but where is the colorful spandex? But hey, change can be good, right? Then like a glittery wrecking ball comes Goldar, the golden sensation who once boasted magnificent Griffin meets Manticore vibe. We were ready to embrace his monstrous grandeur, but what did we get instead? A liquid gold monstrosity that could double as an avant-garde art piece in a modern art museum. Rita Repulsa's craft skills seems to have shifted from raw carvings to a lavish obsession with metallurgy. The original Goldar had had an aura of fearsome elegance, like a creature that just stepped out of a medieval tapestry and decided to wreak havoc in Angel Grove. Now, in the quest for a Midas touch, he's been dipped, dunked, and drenched in more gold than the rapper's jewelry collection. It is as if he is the result of a metallurgical mishap that would make alchemists collectively cringe. Your Goldar was always a henchman, but there is a difference between having minions at your disposal and becoming a liquid bling blob. This gold-drenched golem's mission? Extract a Zeo crystal, and in the process turn Earth into a modern art masterpiece gone wrong. It is like if King Midas had a really bad day and accidentally turned himself into a hulking heap of gold instead of just his food. But let us also not judge too harshly. The jury is still out on whether this new Goldar can deliver the villainous charm and witty repartee we all secretly crave. Perhaps under all that gleaming gold there is a heart of comedic gold. One thing is for certain though, this gold monster's transformation might just be the Midas touch gone haywire, and the fans' love for the original Goldar might still shine brighter than even the shiniest molten metal. His wings are symbolic in nature. Ah, Goldar's wings, the enigmatic symbols of his eternal quest for the right winged aesthetic. The wing debate has raged on for decades among Ranger fans like an intellectual battle for the ages. Were those majestic appendages a crown jewel or just the unfortunate result of a monstrous midlife crisis? In the early days of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Goldar strutted onto the scene with a pair of wings that looked like they were ready to catch air like a winged superstar. But as fast as they fluttered in, they fluttered out, disappearing without a trace, like a magician's rabbit that decided it had better things to do. Season 2 rolled in with new fashion statements and, lo and behold, Goldar's wings returned with a vengeance. This time, they spread wide and bold, signaling to the world that Goldar was reclaiming his winged identity. It is like he went to a stylist, pointed out a picture of an eagle and said, Make it work, darling. Lord Zed, in all his makeover glory, seemed to understand the importance of those wings. He gifted them back to Goldar as if to say, Fly, my fettered friend, and retrieve my lost swagger. It was almost poetic, a tale of triumph over cosmic dry cleaners that had dared to steal his wings. Yet, just as Goldar's wings signaled his resurgence, they also became the ultimate barometer of his performance. Like a reverse merit badge, those wings could be taken away just as swiftly as they were given. Imagine the playground politics of it all. Hey Goldar, nice wings. Oh wait, never mind, you messed up again. But the real kicker, the cherry atop this wing conundrum, was that Goldar's wings were not just a fashion statement. They were symbolic. They embodied a tragic tale of villainous redemption. As the legend goes, Rita had ripped those wings away like a disgruntled stylist cutting up a bad hairdo. It was a punishment for repeated failure, a humiliation that Goldar had to bear in the face of those righteous teenagers with attitude. Then came the Tenga Warrior heist, a moment that could only be described as wings on the fly. The ever-vigilant fans caught a glimpse of those discarded wings carried away like treasures of a fallen warrior. Goldar's lost hope, his crushed aspirations, all hanging on the wings of a Tenga Warrior, 
Now talk about poetic justice. And let us not forget the 1995 Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, where Goldar took to disguise like a metallic Hercules, defying gravity with wings that spoke of his untapped potential. It was as if he finally unlocked the true secret of his aerodynamic artistry. So there you have it, Goldar's wings, the ever-shifting symbols of his villainous journey. Are they a badge of honor, a tale of redemption, or just a pair of oversized, feathered decorations? Regardless of their true nature, we know one thing for certain, Goldar soared through Ranger history with those wings, leaving behind a trail of enigmatic flight that continues to baffle and bewitch fans to this day. Does he know magic spells? There is no indication that Goldar has the ability to use magic spells in the same way that Rita Repulsa or Lord Zed did. Rather, his abilities seem to be more focused on summoning various foot soldiers to aid him in battle. First, Goldar could summon both versions of the Putty Patrol to fight the Rangers. Later on, he was able to summon the Tenga Warriors after they replaced the Putties as the villain's foot soldiers. Goldar even got his hands on the Badges of Darkness, which could transform Putties into mirror images of the Power Rangers. However, this plan did not quite work out as expected, as the Rangers were able to defeat their Dark counterparts with relative ease. It is unclear why the Badges of Darkness would be wasted on putties, especially ones that could talk and were obviously not the real Power Rangers. It seems like a bit of a strange plot choice, but then again, Power Rangers has never been known for its logical storytelling. So to answer the question, there is no evidence that Goldar knows any magic spells. Instead, he focuses his abilities primarily on summoning various foot soldiers. As for the Badges of Darkness, well, let us just say that their effectiveness may have been a bit overrated. Can he shoot fireballs from his eyes? Move over, Superman. Goldar's got a new superpower, and it is eye fireballs. That is right, this villainous henchman can shoot explosive fireballs from his eyes, which were powerful enough to cause massive explosions around poor Jason. Talk about burning up the competition. But Goldar's eye fireballs were not just for show. When he teamed up with Scorpina's Claw Barrage, they took down the Thunder Megazord and even forced the White Tiger Zord back into its default tiger mode. Looks like Goldar's eye fireballs are a no laughing matter, except for the part where we are laughing at how ridiculous it sounds. It is hard to imagine the scene of Goldar shooting fireballs from his eyes without bursting into laughter. But hey, when you're a villain, you gotta have some tricks up your sleeve, or, in this case, in your eyes. It just goes to show that in the world of Power Rangers, anything is possible, even if it is as absurd as eye fireballs. So to answer the question, yes, Goldar could shoot fireballs from his eyes, and it was as ridiculous as it sounds, but hey, who said being a villain had to be a serious matter all the time? Does Goldar have any romantic relationships? Can he reproduce? Ah, the burning questions of the Power Rangers universe. Does Goldar have any romantic relationships and can he reproduce? Talk about getting personal. While we can't say for sure whether Goldar is romantically involved with anyone or has the ability to reproduce, we do know that he has a close relationship with Scorpina. The two villains have shown affection towards each other with Goldar being protective of Scorpina, but whether that affection is platonic or something more, we may never know. As for Scorpina, she is a human-scorpion hybrid with the ability to transform between her beautiful human form and her monster scorpion form. And even though we do not know whether she is capable of reproduction as a hybrid creature, we do know that she is a ruthless and dangerous minion of Rita Repulsa. But let us be real here, Power Rangers is a kid's show, so romantic relationships and reproductive capabilities are probably not exactly at the forefront of the storytelling. Instead, we get epic battles between the Rangers and their enemies, with the occasional cheesy one-liners thrown in for good measure. So while we can answer those burning questions about Goldar's love life or reproductive organs, we can say that he and Scorpina make a pretty fearsome team when it comes to taking on the Rangers. And at the end of the day, that is all that really matters in the world of Power Rangers. Kicking butt and taking names with your favorite giant robot. Had enough, you overgrown flying monkey. You haven't seen the last of me, you insufferable do goodness. Does he know teleportation? It looks like Goldar is more than just a pretty golden face. He has got some serious teleportation skills to boot. From vanishing into thin air to avoid attacks, to casting flame waves and energy beams that teleport his enemies to different locations, Goldar has a wide array of teleportation abilities at his disposal. He is like a one-man Uber, except instead of a car, he has got a sword that shoots golden energy beams. 
Talk about a sweet ride. But let us not forget that Goldar's teleportation skills are not just for show. They make him a formidable opponent for the Power Rangers. He can also use his sword to cast flame waves that teleport his enemies to any location he chooses, and when charged up with dark gold energy, his sword can unleash a wave of golden energy to teleport beings away. In addition, Goldar can fire golden white colored energy beams from his sword to teleport beings to any location he chooses. This ability was seen in action when he teleported Kimberly and Shauna to different locations. How powerful is Goldar? Goldar may not be the strongest of the evil space aliens, but he sure is a force to be reckoned with. As the fourth most powerful member of the group, he is stronger than Squat, Babu, and Finster, and roughly on par with Rita Revolto. When it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, Goldar may not be as skilled as he is with a sword, but he is still able to take down all five rangers with ease. While Tommy was often able to overpower him, Goldar's raw strength and durability made him a formidable opponent. Speaking of strength, Goldar is no slouch in that department either. He was able to seriously shake up the Dino Megazord's cockpit with a single slash, and an extremely powerful double kick was enough to knock back the entire Megazord. Later on, he even teamed up with Scorpina to take down the Megazord in episodes like Eclipsing Megazord and Crystal of Nightmares. But perhaps Goldar's most impressive attribute is his durability. Despite being struck by the Energized Power Sword and Thunder Saber, as well as hit by a fireball from the White Tiger Zord in Warrior Mode, Goldar was still able to keep on fighting. In fact, the fireball only made him and Skirpina fall down. It did not even scratch their armor. Is Goldar immortal? Ah, the eternal question. Is Goldar immortal or not? It is like the Strodinger's cat of the Power Rangers universe. We just do not know. To get more information about the answer to that question, let us talk about the series finale of Power Rangers in Space, aka Countdown to Destruction. This episode was an epic culmination of five seasons of Ranger teams battling evil, and it gave us a satisfying conclusion to the Zordon era. In the climatic scene, Zordon sacrifices himself to destroy all of the evil in the world. All of the humanoid villains, which included Rita, Zed, Divatox, and Astronema, got converted to the good side, while their monstrous henchmen were poofed into dust. But what about Goldar? Well, that is the million dollar question, is it not? Goldar is shown leading the attack against the Gold Ranger, but he is nowhere to be found when the dust settles at the end of the episode. Some fans speculate that he may have been turned into a good human like the other villains, but others believe that he was disintegrated with the rest of the monsters. But here's the thing. This is a kid's superhero show after all, and you know what they say in the superhero genre, if you do not see them die, then they are not really dead. So who knows, maybe Goldar is still out there somewhere flying around a galaxy and making egotistical comments about how awesome he is. Regardless of his fate, Goldar remains one of the most iconic villains in the Power Rangers franchise. His golden armor, towering height, and insatiable thirst for power have made him a fan favorite for over two decades. And even if he did get disintegrated in the series finale, his legacy will live on in the hearts of fans everywhere. Marvelous Verdict. And that concludes our exploration of the anatomy of Goldar, the golden henchman of Rita Repulsa. From his powerful muscles to his magic capability and golden armor, we have delved deep into the physicality and craftsmanship that make this villain such an iconic figure in the Power Rangers franchise. But more than just a physical specimen, Goldar represents the enduring appeal of Power Rangers and its ability to capture the imaginations of audiences, both young and old. Whether you grew up with the original series or discovered it later in life, the world of Power Rangers is sure to continue to inspire and entertain fans around the globe. So whether you're a die-hard fan or simply appreciate the artistry that goes into creating memorable villains, we hoped this exploration of Goldar's anatomy has given you a new appreciation for the physicality and craftsmanship that make Power Rangers such a beloved franchise. Thanks for tuning in and may the power protect you. If you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.